Hey everybody, welcome back to Nerd News Today. I'm Matthew, and today we're going back to the world of gargoyles because finally we have a new statue to take a look at from Diamond Select. And this is the perfect follow-up to the very first statue that they did. Today we're taking a look at Demona. The first statue in the series was Goliath, and it makes sense because Goliath is the leader and really the star of the show. But we knew for certain that the love of his life, Demona, would absolutely be a follow-up. We just didn't know how soon it would be, and here she is now as the second statue in this lineup. I had a lot of good things to say about that Goliath. Mind you, a few nitpicks as well, but overall some very good things to say. So I'm curious to see what's going to be new and different about this Demona, and how she's going to look next to her counterpart. But real quick, let's talk about this box here, and there isn't a ton to say about it, thankfully. Now, this Demona is a resin bust, which means that she's going to be packaged like the way that Diamond packs all the resin pieces, which is unlike the PVC pieces, meaning no windows at all. It's just this big old honking box with absolutely no way to see inside the packaging. It's just there. It's just this thing here. But at least I will say there is some like design work in the packaging, which is nice, as opposed to like some Star Wars pieces or others. Now, a lot of times it's just black, but this time around there are some design elements and it really helps it stand out. Beyond that, we just have images of the statue on the front as well as on both sides. So you can see them right there. Just giving you a little bit of a sneak preview of what we're going to see in here. And of course you got, instead of the Diamond Select sunroof, we got the Gargoyles logo on the top. Now as for the back of the box here, well there's no character specific bio for Demona, but we do have here, it's really just a quick wrap up of what the story is leading into Gargoyles. Now while I wish there was more of a personalized bio for her, it still is a pretty good version of wrapping up the events of Gargoyles pretty quickly. But the absolute most important information here is that this was designed by Barry Bradfield and sculpted by the fine folks at Varner Studios. Now if you don't know those names and why this is an excellent sign here for this piece, Barry is the guy who also designs the X-Men animated series pieces that Diamond has been doing, and those have been stellar pieces top to bottom. And Varner Studios, they are essentially the leaders, I would say, in toy design. I mean, Varner Studios goes all the way back to the early Playmates days of Ninja Turtles, of Star Trek, of Exo Squad, uh, Monster Force. So many really great toy lines were done by Varner Studios. So you know that is a sign of high quality right there. But that's our look at the packaging here. I just want to really get across the credits because, as I said, that is the most important part about this packaging. So with all that out of the way, it's time now. The sun is down. Let's go ahead and bust our Demona out of the packaging and get a closer look at her from all angles. And here we go. Our Demona is out of the packaging and there she is looking mighty fine uh, and also looking quite frightening, authoritative. You know, there's a lot of words for Demona that we could say with her. But the one thing you can't say about her is that she's never not without some kind of devious plan going on in the background. So this is our Demona right now, but you might be noticing something's a little bit off about her. And that's because well, as we turn her to her back there, you'll see she doesn't have her wings on. So I wanted to show you guys that on camera as well, because all the gargoyles in this line come with wings that are packaged separately. So you guys can see here, they're actually magnetic. So that's gonna help keep these guys in place and also make getting them in and out a lot easier. So let me just do that right now for you guys. So all we gotta do is just slide them in. They tend to just find their way on their own to be quite honest usually. And we'll get the other one on the other side. You know, the nice thing about this Demona is unlike Goliath, Goliath had a separate headpiece. Demona does not. So this hair is in place as one. So that makes uh, getting this in and out a little bit easier as well. And now you can see our Demona with her full wingspan on display. So with that now ready to go, let me do a quick rotation and give you guys some more of my initial thoughts about her. And this, this one is another beauty here. You know, uh, it's a great counterpoint already to Goliath because I have Goliath over to the side. and We'll do a comparison in a few minutes, but you know, she is so much different looking than Goliath is. I don't just mean physically, but also just color wise. And it really helps these two statues together pop very nicely. Uh, there's a lot of really nice elements about this Demona here. It definitely is not a disappointment already. Um, as I'm doing this kind of like quick turnaround here, I'm looking through things to see if there's anything I'm gonna complain about, but really I'm not seeing much of anything. So first thing, I think I wanna spend some more time on though is talking about the likeness of this Demona here. And does it look like Demona? I think absolutely it does. This is a spot on likeness straight out of Disney afternoon. This is really nice. You know, the difference between the gargoyle statues versus like the X-Men animated series pieces is that these don't really use shell, uh, the cell shading as much. I was going to say shell shading, but I don't know what that is. But as far as like the cell shading goes that you would see in an X-Men piece or Diamond's Spider-Man animated series pieces, you're not seeing that here. Instead, what you get is something a little bit more subtle, which is there's some kind of like toning and weathering effects in some of the muscles to help create some shadows. Not that it needs any help to do that, but it's definitely there. You could see it a little bit here and there, 
but it's actually, I would say, a lot more subtle than what we saw with like Goliath. Goliath was a little bit more in your face about some of those things. I think we're seeing a lot more of the weathering in the body, in fact. You could see it in her arms, a little bit of that in some of the uh, darkness there, and like where her muscles are. And it'll turn a little bit here. I mean, there, there's some, but it's very, very faint. It's very subtle overall. That's not a bad thing. I don't need it to be like in my face all over the place, but like definitely in the trap section here, uh, where her chest is and the shoulders, there's definitely some notable shading happening in there. And likewise too, her wings also has it. I mean, these wings naturally do cast a little bit of a shadow, but you know, you can see it a little better, I think from this angle here. In the crook of the wings, there is some, again, different color and kind of like an airbrush of a different sort of tone in there to help make sure that there's always some kind of shadow and darkness in these wings. Now, another piece I like about the statue is the hair. The hair is really cool here. Not really anything bad to say about that either. And like I mentioned, it's not a detachable piece. This is one solid thing that head's not gonna come off as opposed to Goliath or even the Xantos we're gonna look at. So the hair is nice. It's also very pointy. <laughs> Demona got some real spiky hair here. This is, this is kind of like Knuckles the head. This is kind of like Knuckles from the Sonic video games. Uh, it's very, very sharp hair, but again, it's got that perfect Demona color, perfect tone. And likewise, like the body and the wings had some of that different weathering in there. So too does her hair in this. And since we've got this view over here, I also want to point out the little fingers on her wings here. I always thought those were kind of fun. And it's nice to see them in the statue form. Now, as far as lots of tiny details and things like that, there's plenty of those and they're all in the right places. I mean, Demona has her, whatever we're gonna call this, her crest that she's always had in her head. I've never known what they really actually call that thing, but that's there with a nice shade of gold. And similarly, there's also earrings on both sides of her ears. So you've got one over here, which is the same color as that crest and also on the opposite side over there. So she's got some gold, she's got some bling. And speaking of some of the bling, her arm also has that signature, you know, there's a word for that piece of jewelry. I don't know what it is, but this thing that wrapped around her, that was always like a signature Demona element. She's got that. And likewise with the bling too, let's not forget that she got her belt buckle. It's not the most exciting, but I'm sure it was the height of fashion in medieval times. So top to bottom, it's a pretty knockout piece here. And there's really not much to talk about as far as costume either, because Demona didn't really wear anything that lavish. It's basically just this torn piece of fabric that's covering her breasts. So, uh, you know, that's fine. Uh, there's not really time to say about that. Uh, other than there seems to be a little bit of weathering there too, just so you can see like kind of underneath the breasts and it just kind of helps it make sure that it stands out a more, it doesn't just fall in because it's this sort of very soft beige color here and uh, that can kind of get washed out, but it's a very good balance, especially with the blue and the purples and the reds, these very cool colors. This beige adds a little bit of warmth to her. Now let's spend some time talking about the base here. I'm gonna do another rotation just so you guys can take in all the angles of this base here. It's exactly the same as the base we saw with Goliath, and it's gonna be the same base we see with every Gargoyles piece out there. They tend to keep their resin pieces here at Diamond uh, very, very much identical and uniform. And that's for the purposes of making your life as the collector easier. So they're all gonna be more or less the same. They might vary in size here and there, but I don't think they do. I think they very much try to keep these things in the same scale. But it's got a very cool New York feel to it while also being not New York at all because you know New York has that Art Deco kind of gothy brick looking thing. But so too did the medieval times that these castles they're from were built in. So you're still getting that, especially with this weird little gargoyle sort of face over there. So the base is excellent. I'm a big fan of how that looks. And that's pretty much our up close and personal look with Demona. So why don't we bring in some buddies for her to be compared with? And I think it's most fitting now to bring in her companion. So let's squeeze in Goliath here, just so you can see how these two look side by side. And uh, now we're really talking, you know, like this is one thing I was a little bit curious about was when they first uh, released Goliath. And I was wondering about his size, how he's gonna look next to other characters. I think they're, they're pretty much in size. They're pretty much in scale with each other. That, that's, you know, I don't think we've seen that with some of the other uh, pieces recently from Diamond with this resin minibus thing. You know, like I'll say with Star Wars pieces and that thing, it's been pretty good. But I feel like with, for example, the X-Men animated series pieces, sometimes they've been a little bit all over the place, I think. I think, that's just my personal thing. I might be wrong about that, but uh, the Gargoyles pieces here, these are definitely in scale with each other. I'm not really seeing any issues. And plus they just look really good with each other side by side, don't they? Let me take Goliath out for a second. Now let's bring in another piece. And this one you're gonna see in a different video here on this channel. Here is Xanatos in his Gargoyle armor. Again, looking really cool, definitely in scale. I'm gonna say again, definitely in scale. And man, that armor is some sharp looking stuff there. So do make sure you check out my review about Goliath, of course, but also my review about Xanatos if you wanna see more of the ins and outs on that piece. But overall, this Demona from Diamond Select is another wonderful entry in the Gargoyles line. Very happy to see it continue to expand because to be honest, I was actually worried about it for a little bit. We hadn't heard any news about it. We had that Goliath come out what it felt like forever ago. And then all of a sudden we get Demona and Xanatos in the same breath. 
So I'm hoping that that means the releases are going to pick up a little bit more. Uh, and, you know, I understand because we've got a lot of other things going on, a lot of other releases to attend to. But we still got a lot of characters to go and I want to make sure we keep getting them. So I'm hoping up next we're going to get Aliza, we're going to get Lexington, and of course we have all the other gargoyles too. Maybe we'll go beyond it into some of the supporting characters like Cold Steel. Maybe we'll get Matt Stone or whatever, uh, Blue Stone, I think it was Black Stone, whatever. I don't know, the other detective. We'll see how far this thing goes. So I'm happy to see that it's continuing to have some legs here. Or maybe in this case, some wings. So if you'd like to pick up this Demona for yourself or any of the other gargoyle statues from Diamond Select, Go ahead and check out our link in the description for this video below. We're going to have links to some places you can pick her up along with the other members of her clan. So until next time, I'm Matthew. This has been Nerd News Today. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys here later.